my god, time. technical difficulties. But it wouldn't it wouldn't be an expanse themed thing if there wasn't technical difficulties, right? I feel like that's that's very flavor for us all. Hi everyone, I'm John Boltina, uh, and I talk about the expanse. Uh, that's all I have. Um, and, uh, uh, but I'm joined by one of my, my, my good friends, another fan chatter. I guess we're calling this the fan chat, the Expanse fan chat now, I guess by default. Yeah. Uh, who we delve through the entire Telltale series, uh, all the emotional turmoil. Uh, my friend Amber, Amber, uh, tell them about yourself. Hi. So, um, as John said, the mutual friend, uh, met to the, uh, for our mutual love for the Expanse. And, um, I'm kind of, uh, and, I'm one of the moderators for the Time That Guy Discord community, and I'm also a drummer cosplayer. You are um, the best drummer cosplayer I know. Like you're riveting at it. Uh, oh, it's, thank it's, you. It's out of, no, you're really good. You don't don't downplay yourself. Um, I, I've been told I have drummer energy, and I have no idea energy. what that. Yeah, I have like I give off like major. That's a whole. That's energy. a whole other stream we'll have to get to here at some point. Uh, and ex <laughs> and ex ex explain what drummer energy is. I'm I'm now intrigued. Uh, but, I don't we are, know what it is. but we are privileged tonight to be joined by this gentleman down here. Uh, Brian, introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do. Uh, my name is Brian Volkweiss. I'm the founder and current CEO of the Nacelle Company, uh, which for the most part is well known for doing documentaries like toys and movies that made us on Netflix, uh, behind the attraction on Disney Plus and a lot of other shows. And um, I am a huge fan of The Expanse. And about three years ago, we started manufacturing our own toys. I was in a, just a regular general meeting at Alcon that had mm. nothing to do with The Expanse, like nothing. And in the meeting, uh, one of the gentlemen was like, hey, man, I saw on the internet that you're doing toys now. And I was like, yeah, yeah, we're doing Biker Mice from Mars and blah, blah, blah. And he was like, well, would you ever consider doing The Expanse? And I'm like, well, what? Uh, and that, that, that's how it all happened. Um, and now we're making The Expanse toys. And uh, we have a Kickstarter going. And I am uh, trying to get more people to back start it. And I, I dropped a link to the Kickstarter in our chat, so if you want to go follow along with that, you can go check it out and uh, see what the figures look like in detail and such like that too. And uh, it's it's actually heavily pretty detailed. So uh, interesting story. My my next question I was going to ask is how did this come about? And thank you for answering it. Um, but yeah, because I, I heard about the 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 figures about two a little over two years ago, I think it was. Um, through I, I subscribed to some toy. I used to be a toy collector. I used to be really into Transformers. Um, and, uh, I've since like, just kind of, I have to focus my energies nowadays. It's kind of how I, I view myself, but, um, I still kind of mess around with those forums and I saw that, oh, oh cool, Expanse, I'm a big Expanse fan, you know, uh, and it was an interesting time because that's when like, it, that got announced, the video game got announced, um, um, a few little things got announced here and there. And I wrote, a, I actually, I don't know if you heard, I, I wrote a, I wrote a paper about this, uh, and yes. talked about like, you know, the whole. Uh, being an like expanse fan is very DIY, so it's interesting to see like merchandise coming out now. Um, it's a weird, it's a weird time to be an expanse fan, but it's also a good time to be an expanse fan. So um, I wanted to, I wanted to mention that. Um, so I guess like uh, let me let me ask you this: Why these eight? Like why these? Like why? Like why? Why? I mean, obviously we have the crew of the Rosinante. that made a lot of sense. Um, but then I was like, I, I think the one I'm only kind of questioning is like, why the hybrid? Why, why the hybrid? Why the hybrid? Yeah. Well, if I'm being completely honest with you, uh, well, there's two reasons. There's like a normal reason, really? and then there's me that's still like a 12 year old little boy reason. I like the 12 year old so, little boy reason. That sounds actually like, no, I'm sure like, that's actually like, that was actually, the, I, I have a feeling I know what that is. What is it? You yes. want Bobby to fight someone. You need that. So what you, I was going to say, but you what, you said, what you said is better. But what I was going to say is you need people to shoot at. Yeah. You need things to shoot at. Uh, you got a Goliath suit. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Who are you going to shoot at? Exactly. You know, very true. That's, exactly. that's five year old and me talking to you right now. But the beauty is you could be 47 year old me and you could still talk to that 12 year old and 
because luckily I'm able to do what I do, I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. You got to shoot at something. I love it. Yeah. I love it. What? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great one. I, I was actually... Um, uh, sneak oh, yeah. Look at it. <gasps> oh. oh, we're getting a sneak peek. That's very that's cool. That's ever been shown anywhere ever. Very cool. Is that now? Is that like a uh, a fully like uh, hand painted prototype or? Yes. So it's a hand painted prototype. So it's called a paint master. So it's not articulated yet. Mm. So next step: once we approve the colors and everything and the height, um, then it get we get an articulated version that'll get sent to us. Um, that'll be all gray, and we mess around with that until mm. we're happy with it. Then that gets painted, and then that's what goes to China for the factory to make the molds. Then we go back and forth with the factory. Then we go into production. Very cool. I um, I, I was there are question because this is on Amber and I because as Amber as a cosplayer, uh, knew exactly which scenes drummer's costume was from, because uh, you know hands down because you're like that. Um, oh, here he gets, he's, got, he's got more visuals. Oh. This, this is a Gen 1, mm -hmm. so it's much, much better now. Like, you can see her eyes are a little, there's a little too much mascara, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, this was a Gen, so what I just showed you, um, that was like a Gen 3. Mm -hmm. So this is a Gen 1, so it still needs a fair amount of work. Um, and we have the Gen 2 uh, in another room. Uh, but yeah, here here is drummer. Very cool. That's uh, from season. That's from season five, or I think, right? The it's six. Just, yes, it's so. Even though my favorite scene of hers is, of course, the speech before she goes in the ring, um, that outfit was deliberately chosen from my second favorite scene in the Expanse, which is when she's shaking hands uh, with Ava Salar. Yeah. So. Yeah why she's wearing that outfit yeah and I, and I thought that was clever how you did the two packs like the the kind of two pack of favorites like here's you know uh bobby and the, and the hybrid and here's drummer and ava sorella which is interesting because those are like those those scenes are like very far apart in the series like but you kind of get the narrative of it all but um, to be fair like those are iconic they are they are no, extremely but... iconic and I th and so I think those were well um, selected. So my oh, hats off to you. Like completely. I think that those are like you did a great job with those. I'm so happy to hear you say they're iconic because it, and I'm I'm just being very honest with you. Like I like so I'm not a cosplayer. Like I am not a you know I don't go to expanse events or expanse conventions or anything like that. But I, I have seen every episode at least twice. There are certain episodes I've probably seen seven or eight times. So, you know, we would run everything past Alcon and everything would get approved. But I really was just kind of trusting my gut. And I really didn't know what the reaction would be mm. to certain. I didn't even know what the reaction would be to Drummer because <laughs> I didn't know how popular. I thought it might just be me. So to your question, how did we pick what we picked, which is a great question, I just kind of went with my favorite characters. I mean, I mean that, really, that really is what I did, and I just prayed to God it wasn't just me. I, I think it's a good selection. I think for the, the first, I think if this is, hopefully is the first way. I, I'm not saying it was hoping, hoping, we're hoping, right? Um, Man, I think it's a good selection. Mm -hmm. I think you picked some great costumes. I, I, I like, it's one of my favorite Miller costumes. Um, it would have been really easy to go with like him in like the space suit, you know, when he assaults a uh, soft station. But like, no, like him in the the business kind of quasi casual. I'm a detective. I you yeah. gotta have the hat. The hat's a big thing. It doesn't make yeah. sense to have a hat in the space suit, you know. Um, I really, I really like that one. Um, that one's actually one of my uh, my favorites to be sure. Um, I, the one I do want to ask about is Holden. Is that is that Holden's outfit from Illus? Uh, yes. Oh, there's, oh, it's Jimmy. Jimmy himself, so, wow. I love it. Yeah, yeah I think that's good, too. Yeah, I think I, that's a good I, one. I like, like, the, I think that, like, the, um, I think, uh, the, the character growth that we see in season four when, like, Holden is really, like, he's the sheriff that rides into town in the wild frontier. 
Yeah. They did a lot of like if that the, that season when they were doing um, on Illith, they did a lot of those like West spaghetti mm -hmm. western shots. Yes. And so I think that's like that was a real like turning point for um, Holden's character as like we see him. We, we we're used to him being a leader in the Bastante with a small crew, but then you sort of um, you you kind of like grow the amount of people that he's kind of in charge of and it's like it's, it's great to see that his leadership skills like scale up because sometimes people don't they kind of collapse you know under the weight of all that responsibility and i think that was i think that was really well selected with that too i'll be completely honest with you he probably it's so funny like he was probably one of my least favorite characters oh, yeah. in the first seasons and then the this moment again i just went with my gut that you you amber you just said it better than i could have like that's why i chose that because that for me is when holden becomes holden i found him very preachy oh, yeah. in the first seasons oh, yeah. um yeah. that's when he started to become like a leader yeah. but John, can i go back to something you said before sure, sure, yeah, please. You reminded me of one of my favorite things of the toys that I completely would have forgotten about. Mm -hmm. You know, we were like, you can't wear a space suit with a helmet. Or sorry, with a hat yeah, on. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, yeah. Bob Miller. So this is Bobby's helmet. Uh -huh. I don't know if you can see this in this image. Oh, but okay. We, little hole for her bun. Very nice. Got to make sure it makes, the hair makes it in the helmet. Exactly. That's clever. Yeah, I, 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 those are like really special touches because I would imagine like Bobby having that like in her Goliath well, suit you, Yeah, because you guys like literally like only like maybe an hour before we came on here on the Kickstarter, they posted uh, the Bobby, that, that Bobby there. And when, I don't think it was revealed that Bobby's helmet would be removable. Oh, yeah. um, I thought it was going to be an extra head because uh, versus having like the, the helmet actually come on and off, which is really cool. No, yeah. she's absolutely removable um it syncs up with the neck apparatus nice. like in the show and one thing i just want to say to everybody because this is one of the biggest criticisms we've been getting and mm -hmm. it's just these are not to scale bobby will be absolutely taller than avasarala like like these are not these are all prototypes yeah because you're just saying, like, make them six inches tall. That's it. Like, just make it, it doesn't matter the proportions. But then the final ones will be ratioed out and such. Yes. Yeah, Bobby exactly. Bobby probably be taller than, especially in the Goliath suit. Yeah. I think it's... Only in the Goliath suit. But I if... mean, I, yeah, from, like, a, from my standpoint with, like, just being a fan and not really knowing, like, the behind-the-scenes process that you're part, you're, you're active in, it's like, it makes sense to me that they're all the same size. Because, like you said, it's the paint masters, right? Is that what it's called? Exactly, yeah. And so, like, we got to get the, the colors right yep. and stuff like that. And that, like, that can be done on any size, mm -hmm. but just, I, I don't know how they the prototypes were made, but, like, I would assume it would efficient with time to have make them all the same yeah. like height yeah it's it's but the the at this stage of the process it's about getting the paint and the details right once that's approved then you start getting into scaling and again i i'm not blaming we deserve the criticism because we're making this not for toy geeks like me we're making this for expanse fans and why would they have a phd in toy manufacturing <laughs> So that are bad. No, no, totally understandable. I I really like it. Um, I'm digging it a lot too. I, yeah, I I also like the. Uh, I, I personally like the whole Nelf fit. I, I live outside Yosemite, so everybody that comes to my town looks like that. Um, <laughs> pretty, he's ready to go hiking. Um, really dug that one. The other one, um, we were also asking. Um, I think the one we were also asking about was Amos's outfit because that was like his outfit doesn't it changes throughout the series, but it doesn't change that much. And so this is like it looks like the season two ish, season three ish. Uh, the Baratna's gas I think was one and two, yeah, maybe like... three, shoot. Because like the cause the version uh, that I have that I made my husband his cosplay mm -hmm. is the one with the Vatanante gal on the back. Oh, okay. And that's, that's I modeled that. Yeah, so it's like season, season one. Four. Yeah, season yeah early season yeah. one. Yeah, season one two ish. Okay, good to know. Um, so Brian, let me ask this then. Let's follow up here. Let's talk about accessories. Yes. Um, 
Well, I want to ask, what is your favorite accessory that's coming with one of these figures? Like the little, little piece, like what's the little piece, like that little, like, just, just gives it that kiss. You know, oh, here it is. Oh, good. I thought I didn't have it. So, uh, and again, this, this is literally got here from Italy, uh, about oh, wow. six. So no, second place, because I have a real one from the show that I got in the auction. Oh, nice. So I, I I love that. But first place. Oh no 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 no. First place. Hold on. And you're gonna need a uh, you're gonna need a microscope for this. Is it a cucumber sandwich? Oh my gosh. <laughs> cucumber sandwich. Wow. Look how tiny they are. You got oh an onion in the room. This one uh, is like half eaten. Yeah. Got right taken out. <laughs> my favorite. This, uh, as I'm sure you know, comes with Amos. Yes, that one's actually my favorite. And that's a prototype. That's a prototype. Don't don't worry. The glass will be clear. Um, so I love that. I don't know the name for it, but that's... By the way, something I have to tell you, I, I don't think you'll be upset with this, but I am, uh, I am a Mars guy. I'm, okay. uh, I'm, I'm not a belter. Um, so yeah, so the majority of the shit that I love... Um, yeah, I can see. It makes sense. Yeah. So, and by the way, uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, if we get funded, I'm hoping not only if I can be greedy for a second, sure. but, but I'm hoping if we get funded that we actually maybe open some of the other brand things, be, steps, stages, because um, there, there's some really cool stuff, like accessory wise. There really this, is. Is also uh, this comes with Bobby? Yeah, her uh, welding tool. That yeah, one's cool. That one's welding. cool. I yeah, my favorite is the uh, the bottle of Casa de Lola, actually. Uh, and I I'm, my my reason why I'm a fan of that is so my well, I, I play the role playing game. We we have a show where we play the role playing game. We've been playing for almost three years now, and we've had I've been privileged to have some people from the television show play with us. And we had a uh, Jacob Mundell who played Eric. Uh, in season five, or in season uh, season five, play with us, yeah. and he brought that bottle on as a prop during the game. Um, for he's like, yeah, I got some stuff for Earth to celebrate with. Here it is, and it was that. And so we always kind of make comments about the Casa de Lola tequila that he uh, he procured. We'll say uh, <laughs> as he as he tells it, he procured it. Um, so I, I, when I saw that come with Amos, I was like, oh, that's really cool. And I, I have, I feel like I have, you know, kind of a, that one little prop you kind of have that bond with, where you guys see it, it's kind of cool. And you see how it means something to someone else. And I think that's really, that's really spectacular. Um, all right, Amber, uh, you got a question? I, I mean to cut you out, Amber, I, I, I want to hear what Oh, you... no worry. It's totally fine. So, um, Brian, uh, we want to ask, like, how did you find out about these fans? Oh, and... Yeah. Yeah, like, we're trying to bridge these. Like, what's your, like, intro to the Expanse story? Yeah, I it's really boring. Um, I I missed it on sci-fi. You know, I kind of knew it was going mm -hmm. on. Um, but, you know, I missed it. I, I didn't really watch cable TV anymore at that point. So one day, again, it's the most boring story in the world. I wish I could tell you, you know, the door opened and light was coming in. <laughs> I was in bed one day and I had nothing to watch and I was flipping through and on Amazon, there was a cool looking image. And as you know, 99.9% .9 of the time when you hit play and you don't know what it is, you last five to 10 minutes and you're out. Mm -hmm. Just remember this girl with wavy hair and zero G is coming floating towards me. And uh, I'm like, oh, that's cool. I haven't seen that before. And I be, I'll be honest with you, I was half paying attention during all the words. Mm -hmm. So, it, uh, yeah, obviously it was Mao, so I, but I didn't know that yet. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, it's cool. Like, oh, it's a little crazy. All right. Um, all right. Then it cuts and the whole sequence starts, the opening credits. And I'm like, I think I might like this. <laughs> so I found and I read all the setup text. Mm. And that, I mean, that that was it. I, By the way, uh, talking about accessories, from the pilot, this is going to sound so crazy, but there were two moments in the pilot that really grabbed me. One was, and this was the one I wanted to do as the accessory, do you remember in the pilot, Holden is like shaving 
uh, pencil lead into his coffee. No, it was, no he was, it was matches. The matches. Oh, sorry, sorry, matches. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Very embarrassing. That's all right. uh, he's like shaving like with a razor blade mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. And he's putting sulfur into his coffee. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do that as an accessory. Oh, we just man. the work. That's hard, uh, yeah. Small. Smaller than cucumber sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> but that really caught me because I'm like, what a detail. Yeah. Like, what a detail. Like, who thinks of that? And then the other thing, and I'm curious to get your opinion sure. on this. You remember right before the missiles take out the ship, mm-hmm. the girl that Holden was hooking up with, she says something like right before the static. Yeah, she's yeah, like, I want you to know. Yeah. Oh, I what? have to tell you something. I have to tell you something, yeah. What was what was that? Oh, I can tell you. Um, I, I'll give you the answer. I'll tell you, I'll tell you Ty Frank's answer. You don't get a no. Yeah. That's the answer. You don't get a no. Like, are you yeah. asking what I think it would be or like like the definitive answer? Because the definitive answer I think is you don't get a no, which I think is brilliant. I think that's the smartest thing answer what to do you give. Mean, you don't get to know. So Ty Frank is his attitude as a writer is that you don't get a no because there it, it didn't happen. She died. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. you like not, not you specifically, like the audience. Yeah, you know, we all we all got together and said, uh, Brian, you don't no, we're never gonna tell Brian, <laughs> don't tell Brian, cut him out, it's over. <laughs> but no, yeah, like, yeah, I, I think it's actually I, I love the brilliance of that. Like yeah. I respect type decision because like it's um my one of my favorite things about storytelling is that like you watch a movie or read a book or watch a TV series and the characters that are on the screen or on the pages you sort of like for me anyways i go what would i do in this situation mm-hmm. or what would i like like how would i respond to this or that and so i love that it's kind of like not knowing what she was gonna say um i think it helps insert ourselves as the viewers into the story a little bit because then we like go on a speculation i've seen speculation um some of the things i've seen that well, she they, was um then they didn't, she, didn't she time, was, like didn't time that she, guy do like a, like a survey about them. what was she gonna say and like one of them was no, like i have no, chlamydia or something like, no um but like some people think some people speculated that she was about to tell um holden that she was hooking up a shed yeah that was the one yeah yeah, I've heard yeah. that she was pregnant. Yeah, or, there's, that's a big one. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's a bunch. I yeah. By the way, yeah, I, if you don't know, Brian, this this between the two between Amber and I, we are very much uh, Shed Garvey fans. Okay. Yeah, so we would like to see Shed in the second wave. Yeah. Okay. Re- removable head. <laughs> Has to have a removable head. Yes. Like, and whatever, if you, if like, you don't have a removable head on Shed, like you have a... failed. I'm nothing personal. I don't make the rules, but like removable head. Must be like a big feature, like on the slash of the car. <laughs> I, oh my god! I, like, and by the way, he would come with no. What, it, what, it, what were they taping to the walls? Like, they no, were like soldering, like the um. The oh, the binders. They were binders. Yeah, yeah like the, the binders. Emergency. Yeah, yeah. Come with a binder. Yeah. No shed. Yeah, you have all the aftermath and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, we have a. When we were doing the video game, we talked about how the, the another, another kind of read one feature of the game about would be Shed Garvey. And my idea is that she, my my premise is that Shed Garvey was just some like washed up drug dealer who failed his way out to the belt and like just kind of like ended up being the med tech because he knew drugs. Like that, like, that's all he did. He didn't like really treat anyone. He just like here's some drugs. <laughs> and look, yeah, Shed's uh, we're we're big we're big Shed uh, uh, fans over here. Um, yeah. We love to make them. Yeah. Um, so let me ask this too. Then, what is something? Um, so, what what actually got you into doing the toys? Like, I mean, cause I know you're a big fan. Obviously, that that's not a question. But like, prior to this, uh, you guys had mostly done like production and such. But what like, and you guys did, I think, uh, Robo Force also and Biker uh, Biker Mice Force. I still have one of my original Robo Force figures from when I was a kid too. Like, it's terrible. It's it's like super bad shape. Like, threw it around like mad, but. Uh, it's a, it was a fun toy. What what got you like into actually wanting to make toys? You know, it's 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 a crazy answer, but it is the truth. Um, I'm a big toy collector. I've been, you know, if you include the toys from when I was a kid, I've been collecting for about 43, 44 years. Um, if you start with when I bought a toy knowing for the first time 
I wouldn't play with it. It would just go on a shelf. Mm -hmm. I've been collecting toys for about 35 years. Mm -hmm. So we do this show for Netflix called The Toys That Made Us. Mm -hmm. And um, that made us, it's kind of these, you know, these are not my words, but it's considered to be one of the more important documentaries about toys. Mm -hmm. so we started getting all these incoming phone calls and emails. And then one day I got an email from a guy who was like, hey, man, like you have the brand and toys. I bet if we did a deal together, I could get you opportunities. And I was like, well, I don't really like, I don't know. Like I've always wanted to make toys, but I don't know. He's like, well, let's try. So we did a deal. And then two weeks later, he was like, have you ever heard of RoboForce? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I fucking love RoboForce. I have every single one ever made. I have two of the vehicles oh, of wow. two, yada, yada, yada. So we acquired it. And again this is if i'm being honest and i hope i don't sound like an asshole but when you own the company and you have the money <laughs> one says do you want to do RoboForce?" i was like yeah sure why not so we it, it literally got us into the toy business we made every mistake you can make <laughs> um i'll give you an example RoboForce wave one um was two figures those two figures cost us more than all three biker mice and their bikes combined oh, wow. that's how mistakes we made but we survived and we learned how to do it better and better better doesn't just mean more efficiently economically but also if you look at what happened with roboforce that led to sectors that led to biker mice that is leading to cowboys and mumesa and by and um uh power lords oh wow You'll, it's all improving as it relates to quality and we're also doing it uh, for a much more efficient price which means we can sell them cheaper yeah you know full force were 50 bucks a piece biker mice which are exponentially more complicated to make and five times the amount of paint colors and everything those are 34 bucks so as cheesy as it sounds as we get better at making toys we're able to pass the savings on to everybody and it's not that i'm like doing this for charity but believe it or not i hope you're both sitting down we can we can sell more if they're cheaper yeah so that's that's how it happened no that, yeah. that, that's the standard process of a lot of technologies it's just you get better at it over time and it gets cheaper and cheaper you know and by all means i I got a, I have a, I'm looking at a 32 inch monitor that 20 years ago would have been $10,000, you know, it's like, you know, and I bought it for not even a fraction of that. So it's, that's how it goes. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Well, let me ask this then too. What is one thing you want the Expanse community, the fandom, there's several community, we're, Amber and I are both part of different communities. I, I do a lot of stuff with the role playing game, which is a whole different, a whole different uh, bag of marbles. Uh, there's like the different uh, expanse geeks. There's the different groups here. There's several, there's several Discord servers, I might add. Uh, there's a ton of them out there. But what is something you would want them to know about this project from uh, Nestel and from you? What's something you just want them to just know that they may not pick up on initially? The love that we are putting into this is i mean it, it's our love of the show mm -hmm. like i promise everybody that if we get funded that the day ding dong and you open the door and the ups person is there <laughs> and you open the box you will see that this was made by people that really weren't even trying to make money like i i have a four thousand plus toy collection mm -hmm. have every single aliens that NECA has made i have a 200 piece robocop collection i have a probably 800 piece star wars collection probably a 1200 piece star trek collection probably 500 gi joe figures it is crazy that nobody made the expanse before us like we are doing this Again, not for charity. Now, I'm not like some expanse crusader trying to save the world. That would be ridiculous. That'd be James but, it, it, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
He's the one. Um, there needs to be expanse toys. Like, and we are going to make these admittedly biased, but they're going to be gorgeous. The oh. details will be gorgeous. The heights will all be right because they need to be up there. If there's Battlestar Galactica figures, and I probably have a 200 piece Battlestar Galactica collection. You guys are doing the math being like, this sounds like a lot more than 4,000. But my point is <laughs> this had to get done. And we were just lucky mm. that we happened to be in the toy business long enough for Alcon to trust us and to make these things that will give. So the same way that I have like, a, a, an Adama and a Colonel Ty and a Starbuck figure that give me joy every time I see it from Galactica. I want everybody to have these on their shelves or their desks and it gives them joy. When they're having a bad day and their boss is being an asshole, they can see their Bobby and they can see the both <laughs> and our Goliaths, you know, and like it's, we want to give joy to the fans. It re as cheesy as this may sound. That is the honest to God's truth. Yeah. I don't think it's cheesy at all. Like, no. um, I I have been told by multiple people that I have just the right amount of enthusiasm for <laughs> these fans without being too weird about it. And I feel like, you know, um, I, I when I made the cosplays for myself and my husband, I put a lot of, I took my time with them. And with, for me, in similar vein with you, is that the love and care and passion and joy that the expanse gives to me i feel like my skill set and the taking care and the, the getting the details right is proportional like mm. that's how we show our love for something is by oh. you know using our capabilities and our skill set to the best that we can to do the thing that we love and the, the, to express our love for that thing as well yeah no i completely agree that there's a my my essay i wrote and talk about the there was a various like you know, the, the video game, the, the toys also coming up in the Expanse. Um, a lot of what I talked about was we were starved. The Expanse fans were starved for any kind of merchandise. Where a lot of other, like, you'll see shows that come up and all of a sudden you walk into Target and there's like notebooks with the thing on and you're like, what is yeah. the notebook? Like, okay, you know, but the Expanse did, we got, the, the thing that the Expanse that has the most skews is the t-shirt club yeah. for Amazon. Like, and that, you know, that's, that's done. So it's like, um it, you know there wasn't a whole lot out there and so uh yes this is a bootleg hat um and so um but you know uh, that's why i was so excited to see all this stuff coming out here in 2023 and 2024 in the news and getting to find i actually seeing your figures at, at comic con was really cool like seeing them actually in person okay. um that was super great so like that's a big part of it is that we've been diy for so long that now having something come in that's actually like we can actually purchase versus like having to, you know, cobble together, uh, it, it's really cool. Like, it, it feels like validating and, and I'm hoping, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it leads to more stuff and it's a way to get like attention on the series. Uh, I, I've been saying this to people that are fans for a while is like, they're like, oh, we want, we want season seven, eight, nine. Okay, whatever. I'm like, you want to get that? Show the companies that like, you're still interested in this by yeah. watching it on Amazon and or buying the stuff the video game the toys jump in that it shows that people still care um yeah you know i mean why <laughs> you know why is there a new snake plissken action figure every two years i mean <laughs> like, I'm not, like, seriously <laughs> i'm not i'm not saying bad i'm just like look there is but it's, yeah. it's you know we and that's because there's still an interest in that and there's still an interest yeah. in expanse but we have to let people know um and yeah I, and, and, and and I and I um I was gonna say something along the, like uh, on the similar vein. It's like you know if we want like John was saying, if we want these seasons or movies or whatever it's gonna be, we have to show up as fans and say like you know use our buying power as consumers and say this is important to us and we want to see more. Um, because I've I've been I've kind of been like confused as to why Alcon is had been sort of like really close guarded with their IP. I, yeah, that's a that's a whole other conversation with other people. Uh, <laughs> um, I think they're doing. I, I honestly think they did a great job with the video game, and I, and honestly, if they're the toys, they're approving these designs. Like they look spot on. Like, yeah, I'm I'm really happy with. Um, I've had no better partner. They they have been wonderful. Wonderful. So, 
I do have a question. So what was the process like to getting the faces to look like the actors? Because I've seen like, you know, we dolls see, from other like IP. I've seen yeah, the like, looking so, Yeah, Snake Plissken's. <laughs> they don't look like Kurt Russell, right? So, but like, but you, the the figure that you guys are making, yeah. they're like spot on. Like, how did you guys like do that? Like, get that? So, I mean, this this will blow your mind. Um, it, it's the way toys were made 200 years ago, to a certain degree, is how they're made now. Except instead of clay, it's a 3D printer. Mm. So, mm -hmm. what happens is you basically we get all the high res imagery from alcon yeah and give that imagery to a sculptor that sculptor and the guy who's doing this name's valerio uh he's actually in italy mm -hmm. um lives in italy he takes all these pictures and he just looks at them then wow. yeah. he pulls out a light pen and he sits there on the screen and he does his thing with the light pen. When he feels good, he hits print. His printer goes to work for about two hours, three hours, pops out. He looks at it. And this is the cool part. He can then sculpt directly on the prototype, mm -hmm. put it into a scanner. The scanner scans his hand cut things that he did on the 3D print material. Wow. And then he just keeps doing that. He sends us photographs. We give notes. We go back and forth. When we're happy, we send it to Alcon. Alcon gives us notes. And then when Alcon's happy and we're happy, the artist sends us a, um, i trying to think. I don't, I don't have a, a figure, but. Curious here. Let's see what we got. It's like. Yeah, it's it's wild seeing like all this stuff in person actually being completed because like a lot of what we see on the Kickstarter is like mostly like renders. So oh the, wow, this yeah. is from uh, Biker Mice from Mars. Yeah, but it, so we'll get a figure in this color. Mm -hmm. There's no paint, no nothing, and um, we give notes on that, and then he um, usually and we we've, we've worked with this artist many times, so we trust him. So then he will send us one of these, a hand painted uh, test shot. I mean, look, look at her dress. This oh, yeah. is hand stunning, stunning. Yeah. Like I, um, I look at that makeup. I, oh yeah, it's, it's great. Perfect. It's amazing. And like I, I was of all as like, I mean, that was a really like, from a technical standpoint, as somebody who's been sewing, I started sewing when I was nine years old, so almost thirty years now, and. I and so I I I can watch the outfit, um, and just uh like look at the outfits and go. I can I don't know how to make that exactly, but I can tell like how mm -hmm. much attention to detail. So the artists are doing an amazing job yeah. of getting the like getting those visuals looking amazing. Yeah, yeah I'm a yeah. I'm a so I'm a, I'm a big role playing game person, and I started actually before I started playing role playing games, I did miniatures. As I've been painting miniatures for 35 years now, um, and so I, I know like painting toys is kind of a different game, but it's, it's a lot of similar techniques, and it's really interesting to think about like how do you make like something that's small look big, um, look yeah. you know like have the reflections and have that kind of movement and everything too. Um, so yeah. really impressive, and uh, thank you for sharing that process with us, Brian. Super cool. I uh, think you're yeah, sharing cool a... beyond beyond. Oh yeah, your yeah your little mentor. Yeah yeah, that's right. I forgot you're working on one. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's my little yeah. like, I don't know, my little figure character. Yeah. I gotta put it back. She's a little yeah. dusty, but I, uh, yeah. If if, if uh, collecting toys, I, I if we're talking about toy numbers, I have about ten thousand painted miniatures in my closet. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been doing it for a very long time. And it's sad. Um, got, what's wait, that? John, you gotta put those on display. Get them out uh, of the closet. I, I got some on display in the house. Uh, we have, my wife and I have a lot of art, uh, but I have some on display, and some of them, like I said, I painted for thirty five years, so some of them I'm not terribly proud of um they, they they do better with the uh, paint thinner um <laughs> but uh hey look Brian, i know we're running up against time and uh i really appreciate you coming uh agreeing to do this sorry for the technical difficulties and everything but i'm super glad we got to talk to you uh um, thank you for sharing this um we uh i'm i'm excited to back it i'm excited to to get these figures uh i'm excited to see them come to life i'm excited to see uh the guys uh i i Everyone on time, that guy really wants to watch Wes play with a six-inch version of himself. Uh, I don't know how to say that better. <laughs> I really don't know how to say that better, guys. 
I, there's a lot. There's there's been numerous jokes. The innuendo. There's, there's a lot of innuendo. There's a lot of innuendo. On the, well, one, Ty, that guy's a lot of innuendo as it is. But two, uh, it's hard not to come up with a title that is an innuendo for that topic. <laughs> for that topic. Um, because I and I feel bad for him because his uh, there's been an action figure made of a character he's played, but it, you don't get to see his face. Yeah. Um, and so I'm kind of like, right, come on, get put this guy out. He's a good looking man. Let him, let him, let him shine. And so that's why I'm stoked for the Amos figure is to have him shine. And I, I noticed um, on your guys' Kickstarter, uh, Amos, I think, is the most popular single figure. Yes. Uh, and I don't, I, I didn't doubt it for, for a moment. Nor, uh, nor did I. Yeah, nor no, did I. Yeah, I think that's super. I think the second most popular, I think, was the, um, was it, is it Bobby in the, in the hybrid? Or is it like Alistair and Draper? I think those two are really out there. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool to look at the numbers and see what, I, it's really interesting to see what people's numbers are. Um, I didn't look at, I didn't look at Holden's numbers. Um, Okay, Holden, Holden's are, are kind of are, are kind of the whipping boy of the of the Expanse universe, but like, that's what he does so well, <laughs> um, and everything. So, all right, well, look, Brian, um, everybody, uh, if you want to find out more, I dropped a link to the Kickstarter there. Please look up uh, Nacell. Is it Nacell? Did I say it right, Nacell? It's Nacell. You Nacelle. had it right. Look up Nacell yeah. Company on they're on all the major uh, social media platforms. Look up the toys that made us. Uh, another great documentary. You can go look and see some of Brian's work there. Uh, keep an eye on the Kickstarter. Uh, Brian, I really can't thank you enough for sh taking the time out to talk to us because we're just like schlubs. Like we're just kind of like. Uh, it's it's the opposite. I, I thank you. This 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 thing is it's the most important thing we're doing this year. I am so passionate about it. And I just want to get the word out because I'll be fully honest with you. Like I, I thought we'd be funded in like five days. Uh, like I, I really. So we're just trying to get the word out. If you have any suggestions on anything we can do differently, um, where where our you, ears are. Do you want me to give them on air or off air? <laughs> they're very different. So they're very different. Let, let maybe do it behind the we'll scenes. Do, I'll send you some emails. I'll send, we'll, we'll, do some, we'll do an email. I'll talk to, you, I'll talk to your people. They're, and your people, by the way, I should shout out to you. Your people I've been talking to are very nice. And I deeply appreciate their time. So uh, I always hey. want to make sure we always acknowledge people and make all, all of things happen. No, Brian, uh, he, he was very excited about this conversation. But, yeah, if you had a second off air, I did yeah, have sure. a question. Yeah, sure. love we'll, we'll, we'll go and cut up. Well, look, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm back on Wednesday night with Abrax Precipice, uh, where I play the Expanse role-playing game forever. Um, that's my life. And uh, Amber, it's great hanging out. Amber uh, and Brian, thank you again, everybody. Uh, check the link in the chat and uh, go check out the Kickstarter. All right? All right. Uh, we'll see you guys uh, later. Y'all take care. Later. Thank you. Yeah.